Here is a new type of weird tale, and new thrills await you as you read about the sinister exploits of Dr. Satan, the world's weirdest criminal. He's an immensely wealthy man, who has turned to crime to satisfy his longing for thrills, and he makes crime pay beyond the dreams of avarice. For if it did not pay, the game would not be to his liking. He swims to power with utter disregard for others, striking down those in his path cruelly, ruthlessly, inexorably, and weirdly. He is no ordinary villain, but is truly the mastermind of crime, possessing scientific knowledge and power that make him unique among all the so-called masterminds of fiction. He well merits the sobriquet of Dr. Satan, but he is opposed by another mind in many ways equal to his own, Ascot Keen, criminologist par excellence, known even to his intimate friends as only a millionaire playboy. He has turned to tracking down crime for the same reason that Dr. Satan has turned to committing crime, for the thrill of the game. This story is the first in a series of tales, each complete in itself, in which these two strange characters strive against each other. We know that you will be fascinated with the harrowing adventures of Dr. Satan and Ascot Keen, and each of these stories is a genuine weird tale, eerie, uncanny, and permeated with an icy breath of horror, like a cold breeze from the tomb. Gonna be about the cover art because no, because that's actually have... not um, for the story. I know it's not for the story, but it's still great. <laughs> Fucking is, shameless. Is a naked woman surrounded by angry snakes? <laughs> <laughs> cobras, king cobras. She has uh, got really uh, well timed censorship. I gotta say, look at that. Her hands uh-huh. and her hair are in exactly the perfect positions to keep any of the really naughty bits from showing up. Uh, when in Zambula, apparently. <laughs> oh, good old Zambula. <laughs> Who wrote that? Oh, yeah, Robert E. Oh, Howard. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Of course, Robert E. Howard wrote it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, boy. Right, so, right. uh, uh, in, in, because we're looking at like the scans of the actual pulp novels, uh, the page before part two, the consuming flame or entry two, whatever is called in Thessaly. And it's just a little poem by Clark Ashton Smith. And I okay. was peered over there. And the first, I didn't read the first line. I read the line that just says somewhere the golden ass went by. I thought, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think that did happen at some point. <laughs> well, let me read let me read the rest of it. From where the golden ass went by, you other brothers can't deny. <laughs> <laughs> when a guy walks in with a really golden ass. You get out of there fast. <laughs> uh, welcome back to Dr. Satan. Yes, it's time for weird tales on undercooked analysis or uh, it came from the public domain. Uh, it's good to have you all back. We gave it a nice little gap and uh, uh, apologies for not having something for you maybe a week ago. But uh, Dr. Satan seems to be uh, systematically targeting members of our uh, podcast to make sure that we can't all be here to do the recording. Because first mm-hmm. it was Alan. Um, and, you know, again, that's no shade. We, we were like, OK, well, you know, that that sucks. We'll just delay a week. And then right before we started this recording, uh, Kayla started feeling uh, queasy and has gone to lay down. So uh, won't be joining us for this one, but uh, gave a blessing for us to do this together. So uh, I'm doing this in memory of my fallen spouse. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And uh, also weirdly, uh, Doreen, probably... uh, burst into Egyptian flame right before we started recording. It's crazy. <laughs> I told her not to look in that trash can. Oh boy. Um, so, um, Kayla, not only is it all the we, all of the above, but um, there's now a a tree growing out of Kayla's head. This is oh, um, wow. oh boy. I mean, oh. I, I I mean, she, she's giving me a thumbs up. I mean, I think okay, <laughs> that's um, the I tree think, speaking. Oh shit! Now now the trees are parasitic, <laughs> like more parasitic than they were before. Okay, fuck. All out jokes. Anyway. <laughs> 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 Anyone uh, excited for uh, uh, Amazon Prime Fallout TV? I'm still cautiously kind of optimistic. Cautiously, yeah. yeah, I think cautiously optimistic is the general vibe. Yeah, I mean, I I saw someone running in a in one frame with a new California flag, and I was like, okay, sweet. Um, 
they haven't forgotten about them. I really hope there's continuity because my God, do so many things feel like they're dropping the ball on continuity recently. Well, you know, trailers suck. So I'm really trying not to let that paint my perception here, but Agreed. yeah, I will remain cautiously optimistic. If it sucks, All it right. sucks. If it's great. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Not too worried. It, it won't. Here's the thing. We're already, and for a little behind the scenes fun, we're already doing our own fallout story. That is going to be leaps and bounds better than anything <laughs> Bethesda is going to come up with. So. Easily. <laughs> also, uh, a quick note. Um, I watched the first two episodes of the Halo series. Oh, uh-huh. don't do that. Anyone. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Glad to know that twisted metal is still, uh, the better adaptation that you yeah. see. Surprisingly. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> all right uh, that's uh, good to be back quite good anyway <laughs> <laughs> uh it's good to be back in uh with uh our old friends we're gonna see what happens in the continuing escapades of uh dr satan and his arch nemesis ascot keen uh beginning with uh part two i guess part two or just a new story volume two story two yeah uh, <clears throat> the first the first chapter of Volume 2 has uh, an incredible title. It does. <laughs> <laughs> issue 2. I think it's Issue. Because we're almost like comic books here. But whatever. That's true. Uh, well, this is called The Consuming Flame. It's by Paul Ernst. And to give the tagline in here, it says, The price of a life, $10 million. Oh, An we utter- went up a digit. <laughs> or decimal un- place. Oh, yes, indeed. An utterly amazing story about the exploits of the world's weirdest criminal who calls himself Dr. Satan. Not even mentioning Ascot Kane. Like, no, who cares about Ascot Kane? Everyone Kane? knows that no one gives two <laughs> shits about Ascot Kane. It is all about <laughs> Dr. Satan. Yeah. If you haven't heard our earlier two episodes about Dr. Satan, I highly recommend you go back and listen to them. I'd be curious to see how, if people would read this in a vacuum and get a sense what's going on. But I might still put my little voiceover from the other two episodes the, the previous episode at the beginning just to frame what's going on here but we'll see um but alan do you want to actually do you want to kick this yes. off because you you did point out the tight the Cha- first uh, chapter chapter one the night explodes <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh we're in for it now here we go the service telephone rang the chauffeur in whipcord pants and shirt sleeves picked it up the crisp voice of besson President and majority stockholder of Besson Motors sounded out. Carlisle, is the sedan in running order? The chauffeur stared at the phone with bulging eyes. His gasp sounded out. Then he collected his wits and said, Of course, sir. (laughs) Bring it around to the side entrance, then, Besson ordered. Full tank, check everything. I'm going to drive down to Cleveland. I'll drive it myself. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Cleveland! No one goes to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> that train's taking jobs out of Cleveland. <laughs> a river that catches on fire. fire. <laughs> <laughs> We're so stupid, we think this is art. Our economy's based on LeBron, on LeBron James. <laughs> well... We know where this story is going to be going. <laughs> oh, man. If Dr. Satan blows up Cleveland, I'm going to be so happy. That was the night the lights the nights exploded in Cleveland. It was the night they hung an innocent man. <clears throat> Weird sequel to the nights when lights went out in Georgia. Anyway, um, go ahead. Go ahead, Abismi. Man. Carlisle kept staring at the phone in that unbelieving way. He opened his lips several times as if to express the amazement showing on his face, but no words came. Why? Well, do you hear me? Snapped Besson. Beeson? Besson? Whatever. Yes, sir, responded the chauffeur. Certainly, sir. The sedan will be at the side entrance at once, sir. He hung up, swore in profound perplexity. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. How, how does one swear in perplexity? Because... Like, when you're swearing quickly, you're using very, like, rote, blunt words. No one has time to think of, like, well, I'm angry at this situation. I'm going to perplexly swear. swear. Did, he, did, he, did he hang what? up the phone? Did he, <laughs> did he hang up the phone and say something, like, archaic, like, God's wounds? <laughs> Not He didn't have the time to say zooms. <laughs> it, maybe. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Swore in profound perplexity, then shrugged into his whipcord coat and went downstairs to the garage. He loves his whipcord fashion. Yeah. 
maybe Paul Ernst does. <laughs> That's true. Uh, he got into the sedan, an immense gleaming thing built specially in the shops of the Besson Motor Company, and sent out and sent it out to the wide doors and down the graveled lane to the portico of the Besson Mansion. He got out of the car and waited respectfully for his master to appear. I take care of the place while the master is away. But while he waited with a bemused scowl, he felt the car's radiator. It was quite warm. The car had been used recently. Oh, is there a, a bomb? Bomb in the car. Yeah. Well, no, if it turned on, that would have already blown up. Well, that could still be one who knows. Why is the chauffeur so freaked out that he's being called? There's, yeah, there's something know. we don't know yet. Yeah. Because it has it Besson been weird. dead for well, like. Okay. Yeah. I, I've been thinking about um, Paul Ernst's writing here for a while, ever since we read the first issue. Right. And I've come to the conclusion that these stories read more like screenplays. The way they're written, it's all very like it's almost like stage direction, and it, it always paints a very, if not weird, vivid image in your head. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like they're, you know, Paulus is saying, and then, and then with the chauffeur looks a bit shifty, but we don't know why. And then it, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's not written well, but it's not written like a story. <laughs> It's almost as very if, strangely, almost as if it's an invitation from Paul Ernst himself from someone to adapt this. Mm-hmm. Well, someone did make a movie, like a movie Ooh. or a show about it forever ago. I haven't seen it. Well, I would be curious to see how any of this got adapted. Yeah. Now, at least it doesn't have uh, audience uh, di- directions for the audience and the way they're supposed to react, like a certain thing that happened recently in Glasgow. Uh-huh. Hey, oh, timely reference. Uh-huh. But um. <laughs> The more you read about it, the more hilarious it is. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of phenomenal, and uh, I want to on a positive thing. I want to say absolute bravo to the performers who got stuck with that shit gig. That's Glasgow. I'm surprised no one got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's their own reputation that they put forward. I'm very surprised no one just got like fucking Glasgow kissed. Because Jesus. I'd be pissed. Uh, Well, the only person I think would have been was the guy who generated the AI script and the whole fake company that tried to put this on and is an obvious scam artist. Mm. I thought he was going to get, you know, something bad. (laughs) Something. I couldn't think of a good analogy. My brain is kind of still like... Beat the fuck up. Kicked into the sun. Essen came out of the door, followed by a footman who carried a small bag and a briefcase. Essen was a short man, heavy set, inclined to... Oh, another fat fuck. <laughs> fat rich fuck. <laughs> They're all fat. I... <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Paul Ernst is writing from a place of intense frustration, as this was written in the midst of the Great Depression. <laughs> Socialist oh. hero, Dr. Satan. <laughs> oh, this rich fat fuck. <laughs> Meet the new Wallstead, everybody. <laughs> Essen was a short man, heavy set, inclined to rather loud checked suits, which would have looked humorous on his squat frame, had it not been for the quiet, tremendous power lying obviously in eye and jaw. No one laughed after looking into the motor magnate's fat fuck face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm suddenly picturing, uh, uh, oh my god, uh, what's like his bucket? Chubby checkers. <sighs> you know, uh, shut up, Muggsy. I'm thinking of that guy. Oh, yeah. Everything ready? <clears throat> said Besson. Yes, sir, nodded the chauffeur. Once more, he seemed to be on the verge of saying something further, but once more, he repressed himself. Oh, is he being, like, mind-controlled by Dr. Satan? Oh, maybe. Oh. <laughs> maybe. Besson got into the car. The footman put the bag and case in the rear. Besson nodded brusquely, brusquely to the two servants and sent the great machine out of the drive and swirling onto the street with the practice rapidity that was still after his early years as a racetrack driver before he had made his money. Really? (laughs) Okay. The sedan hummed out of sight in an incredibly short time. Carlisle turned to the the footman, and the chauffeur's eyes was something like fear, and small beads of perspiration stood out on his forehead. Well, I'll be damned, he said. What's up? What's up? So the What's footman. Up? <laughs> Could the footman just be like a modern vernacular guy from this point forward. That's great. What's up, dude? <laughs> Dag, yo. Uh, the boss, either he's going crazy or I am. Why? 
Oh, an hour ago, explained Carlisle, the chief came out of the garage. I was washing down the town car. He called, he called to me to ask if the sedan was checked, and I said it was. He got into it and drove out of the garage with it. He had a bag, and I thought he was starting his Chicago, his Cleveland trip then. I want, he wants to go to Chicago. That's my subconscious. <laughs> and I thought he was starting his Cleveland trip then. It seemed kind of funny that he came out of the garage himself for the car instead of having me bring it around, but I didn't pay too much attention to it. He started out an hour ago with a bag, said the footman, staring. That's funny. It isn't as funny as what happened next, Carlisle said. In 25 minutes, I heard a car roll into the garage. I was upstairs in my rooms. I came down, and there was the sedan. So I figured the boss had changed his mind, and it wasn't, he wasn't going, and wasn't going to Cleveland after all. Huh. Hmm, okay. I went back still- upstairs. Yeah, this is weird. Yeah, okay. I went back up. It, it's weird, but like not like it's on... It, um, on course for Dr. Satan. Yeah, yeah. this is very on course for Dr. Satan. I'm just trying to figure out the angle here. And I am pi- I can't help but picture all of this with Batman the Animated Series animation right now. I just read the tagline or the little like caption text for the image on this page. And of course, in my head, I'm like, you are mine, Beatrice Dale. Dr. Satan says softly. <laughs> nope. 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 Sorry. <laughs> it is nope. not possible you... for him to whisper anything. Never. You are you are wrong, book. <laughs> <laughs> A voice was chosen and, and an energy was chosen for Dr. Satan, and we are sticking with it. <laughs> well, I went back upstairs, and three minutes ago, I'll be damned if he didn't phone out, ask if the sedan was checked, and tell me to bring it around to the side door here. Just as if he hadn't been out in the thing himself a little while ago and knew it was checked and ready for the trip. Oh. Oh. Okay. Huh. First the boss came out and drove away himself, repeated the footman. Then, just now, he called for the car to be sent around, just as though he hadn't been in in it the first time. That is funny. In fact, it's skibbity impossible. (laughs) (laughs) Carlisle started (laughs) now. Carlyle stared at him, forehead wrinkled. For the last hour, said the footman, Mr. Besson has been in his rooms. I overheard him dictating a few letters to his private secretary, and I helped his man pack his bag. So we couldn't have driven out of the garage and then back again. The chauffeur bit his uh, lip. (laughs) Sorry, I'm not on the Jameson tapes. He was silent for a long time as the meaning of the statement came home to him. He didn't drive out of the garage an hour ago and come back again 25 minutes later. Then who did? And why? The footman shook his head. Did you see the boss's face? No, admitted the chauffeur. As I said, I was washing down the town car. I heard his voice and saw his body as he climbed in behind the wheel, but it was his voice. I'll swear to that. (laughs) I saw his golden ass go by. (laughs) (laughs) I tried to look away respectfully, but it's so distracting. (laughs) It's so bright. You get sprung. (laughs) In those whipcord pants I'm wearing, I'm <laughs> like it's not hearing. Uh, well, said the footman slowly, somebody besides Besson took that car out for half an hour. I wonder if they did something to it. The chauffeur wiped sweat from his forehead. It, it felt all right as I drove it out of the garage, but if a steering rod was set, sawed in half or two or something, he stopped. Besson was a notoriously fast driver. He burned the roads at 90 miles an hour in his frequent trips to cities near Detroit. Maybe nothing was done to the car, said the footman, through lips inclined to be a little pale. Better not say anything, anywho, af- about this. It, anyhow. <laughs> oh, anywho, better not say anything, anyhow, about this. It might get you into trouble. You're going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. Carlisle not. Zoinks. <laughs> Went back to the garage. But on his face, a look of foreboding grew. With all his heart, he hoped the sedan hadn't been tampered with. But common sense told him it must have been. A man wouldn't take risk and trouble to get it off the Besson property for half an hour without some reason behind the act. And also, he'd seen Dr. Satan fucking around in the garage (laughs) early, so... (laughs) (laughs) Who took that car out? He whispered to himself as he went up to his quarters again. And what did they do to it? So they're just kind of idly speculating this. Well, meanwhile, their boss is driving down the road, possibly to his death, because they know yeah. that the car has been tampered with at this point. Again, it took 500 words for two people to go. Well, that was weird. 
The boss took the uh, car out earlier, but now he's taking it out again. Strange. Huh. Hmm. Anyway, you want to kiss? <laughs> <laughs> and then they made out. Hard. But it was the 1930s, so no one could know about it until now. Out along the road to Cleveland, Besson sent the grand s- great sedan, grand sedan sounds cooler, leaping like a live thing, unaware of the short trip it had made before he stepped into it. It was only eight in the evening. The road was fairly crowded with traffic, so Besson <laughs> plowed through all of them. So Besson <laughs> did not hit his highest road speed. The speedometer needle quivered at 70. Besson was in a hurry. He had to get to the Twisted Metal Tournament. <laughs> I just... I just want to stop here real quick for as descriptive as our writer has been at the past. In the past, for him to say, leaping like a live thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Like a, like a, like a rabbit. <laughs> like a, <laughs> like a seal. Anything. <laughs> a, a frog. A um, cheetah, gazelle. A big horn sheep. Yeah. Besson frowned a little in a puzzled way, and he was puzzled. C- cool, thanks, thanks. Puzzled. He squirmed uneasily behind the wheel of the car. His nerves felt as though each tiny end were being filed, and his hair was acting queer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, this is the root of the word. It, it is. It, like, uh, either way, either way you cut that, it's... Okay, it's fucking Jeez. weird Besson, to say. Jeez. Besson frowned you, a little in a a little in a puzzled way. He was puzzled. He squirmed uneasily. He was nervous. His hair was gay. <laughs> <laughs> My hair wasn't gay this morning. <laughs> it had a tendency to rise on his scalp, prickling and itching as if it had turned to fine wires. He took his hands off the wheel for an instant to see if there was a short circuit somewhere in the ignition system that was sending a little current up the steering column and into the wheel. His, his sensation was vaguely of the kind induced of a slight... Of, yes, I know how electricity works. Jesus, a slight electric shock. But lifting his hands from the vessel... the we, Jesus Christ, I cannot read today. From the wheel did not lessen the sensation. And glancing down at the seat beside him, he saw that a bit of paper from a torn cigarette package clung to the velour... Velour? The velour? Velour. Whatever, the velour, velour as tissue paper clings to a comb that has just been drawn through hair. That <clears throat> was incredibly wordy. That really was. Again, paid by the word, baby. Ooh. Paul Ernst knew how to get paid by the word. Hmm. Traffic cleared. Frowning, Besson pressed harder on the accelerator. Great idea. The car Mm. leaped up to 94 miles an hour, roaring down the road with a sonorous, low-pitched scream. No man saw what happened after that. A dozen pairs of eyes were drawn to the spot a second later, but none observed the entire proceeding. At one moment, the special-built car was racing along the concrete. At the next, there was an enormous flare of violet-colored light, and there was no car there. Furthermore, there was no trace anywhere on the road or along the road that such a car had existed. Besson, the sedan, and everything else had utterly disappeared. Oh, he hit 88 miles an hour and went back to the Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Dr. Satan installed a flux capacitor in the car. (laughs) Man, everyone ripping off Dr. Satan right now. (laughs) (laughs) You know what's happening. I think I see Dr. Satan's plan. He's, He's going to send... Doctor, he's going to send Besson back in time and have him hit a baby Ascot Keen with his because <laughs> <laughs> he'll happen to emerge from time at the moment where he's being pushed across the street in the carriage or something. Just plows into the maternity ward. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that one coming, did you, Keen? <laughs> Uh, and as soon as he finishes saying it, Dr. Satan is plowed by like the time traveling train from the third movie. <laughs> well played. <laughs> I'll get you next time, Keen. The woman behind the counter of a roadside stand was the first of the dozen witnesses to break the awful silence following the blinding violet flare in which a man in a car had vanished utterly from the earth. Oh my god! She screamed. <laughs> um, it snapped the spell. Truck drivers, pleasure car owners, 
Mm. <laughs> Yummy. Oh, yeah. Proprietors and patrons of the roadside stands nearby. Race to the spot. <laughs> My God, the woman screamed again, shrill and high. No. The men she did not it. cry out because they were men. They were, <laughs> not, they as, they were not as they were not as hysterical as the dumb, dumb woman. <laughs> <laughs> at least she didn't faint. That's true. They simply looked first at each other and then at the road and shrugged and went to bed, beating their wives <laughs> or whatever people did in the thirties. A long black streak of charred concrete was all the ev- was all the evidence left of the speeding sedan. It really is. That's it really the is. What what the fuck? Back to the future. <laughs> Did everyone just read weird tales and then like make fucking movies and ripped off concepts? I'm I'm confused. Is 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 weird tales secretly the most influential piece of sci-fi uh literature ever conceived? I mm, everyone <laughs> loves to like talk it down as garbage, but maybe that's just a smokescreen. It was all fucking, fucking genius. Awesome. We're on to you, Zemeckis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how, how would you want to bet uh, Paul Ernst is just a surname for Zemeckis who went back in time to write this? <laughs> Ooh, here we go. Uh, chapter two, the death engine. Cool. Oh my gosh, if this turns into... It, I'm, I, was, I was joking, but if this turns into Ascot Keen and Dr. Satan having a car fight a la Twisted Metal... A car fight through one. time. <laughs> uh, Guys, the you have to stop mm-hmm. writing a better story. <laughs> <laughs> this is all stuff we're going to include in our own Dr. Satan stories later though guys like honestly I don't know the last one ended with a fucking DBZ scream off so I don't know that we can write better stories than this fucking author <laughs> in the experimental room of the Dreyer Automobile Corporation three men stood looking at a roadster outside in the great shop all was thunder and clangor the big machines that turned out the production stream of Detroit's third largest motor factory. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) We're not Detroit! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We're so expensive that they had to be run day and night so that now at 10 in the evening, the uproar was so great as at 10 in the morning. It was as great as at 10 in the morning. But here in the corner laboratory, the roar penetrated only as a murmur, and in critical silence, the three men examined the roadster. Their pants were down, dick in hand. (laughs) Oh, man, we've been waiting for this moment for months. I fucking love expensive cars. (laughs) Taking their fetishes to the new extreme. It was a tremendous thing. The wheelbase was... Huh? A bunch of dick jokes followed by, it was a tremendous thing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, the we- <laughs> the wheelbase was nearly 160 inches. God damn. The mm. hood sloped off and away from the windshield as if the power of a locomotive were under it, Fuck which was yeah. almost the truth. It gleamed with the finest and latest in enamels, a toy to delight the heart of a Raja. This is fucking fetishism. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, now I'm just, uh, even more so, I'm just picturing one of them getting down and just like looking at the chrome and then licking it like... <laughs> Two tailpipes. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh. Everything is all right, said the chief engineer to a mechanic in dungarees nearby who quickly zipped his pants back up. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? Yeah. (laughs) Fine. It's uh, it's fine. (laughs) Listen for yourself, said the mechanic, switching on the motor. Standing right next to the hood, you could scarcely hear the engine. The engineer nodded. A sour look was on his face. 28000 that thing costs to build. Well, it's some car. It'll do about 140 won't it? 148 said the mechanic, nutting in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> the engineer grinned bleakly. And Dreyer's pampered son will use the speed, too. This is certainly a birthday present. When is it to be delivered? Okay, time out. <laughs> If the plot of this this chapter is more socialist uh, Dr. Satan, but focused on the car fetishism of rich people. <laughs> it's like, it, it's hard not to read it that way, though. Because, right? yeah, we literally just going after all these stereotypes of rich people in the, during the Great Depression. It really just is that. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I'm good with it, honestly. It. Ernst got a huge chip on his shoulder, and I am 100% there. This is fucking great. I love it. God bless, God bless you, Comrade Satan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. First thing in the morning, replied the assistant. I got orders two hours ago. I'm to drive it. Oh, fuck yeah, I get to drive it. I get to drive it up in front of the dryer house and leave it to surprise with a Z, Tom Dreyer. <laughs> I'm going to drive it through his window, though he knows <laughs> all about it, of course. Surprise, the head engineer. T- <laughs> the head engineer turned to the mechanic. Stick a canvas over it, he ordered. It would be a shame to get a scratch on Papa's darling, Papa's darling's plaything. <laughs> Jesus. I'll lock up. The mechanic draped a great canvas, such as painters use. Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. Enormous roadster. The men went to the door of the experimental room and stepped out into the clangor of the shop. The engineer locked it. But behind that closed door was not emptiness. <laughs> okay. I like to imagine that the dryer house is next door to a house that's flooded. <laughs> <laughs> The dryer house is right next to the washer residence. <laughs> Considering this story, I would not be surprised. <laughs> Wouldn't even blink. Um, as the lock clicked on the room and the ra- roadster, a shadow stirred in a far corner near the workbench. <laughs> the shadow was that of a man who had been lurking in there for over an hour. The Those man- guys are weird. <laughs> they kept taking their pants off around cars. I don't get it. <laughs> Jeez, why do I have to keep dealing with these people? I thought they'd never leave. (laughs) Listen, this is why I have to destroy them. They just worship the bourgeoisie. Uh, A man, a shape, the man, a shapeless outline in the darkness, went toward the roadster. He lifted the canvas from over the hood and raised the hood catch. From his pocket, he took what appeared to be an aluminum box, a third as big as a cigar box. He attached it to the reverse side of the dashboard. From the box trailed four fine wires. One went to each wheel of the roadster. Then the man worked with the wheels. To each spoke, he attached an almost invisible, flexible fin of colorless material. The fine trailing wires were adjusted so that the ends would almost touch the fins on the spokes as the wheels whirred. Okay, this right here, this paragraph right here is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. If this was more of like a detective series, which is supposed to be because Ascot Keen's a detective Ascot Keen would have discovered this and then would explain and describe what he found at the scene of the crime to Beatrice or whomever. But instead, Paul Ernst is literally just telling us, you know, yeah. no one's saying this. It's just being flatly communicated. It's so and, strange. And the reason for that is Ascot Keen is not the main character. No. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Ascot Keen is supposed to be the foil. In any other story, Ascot Keen would be the main character. But he had to have read the reactions to the first story. And <laughs> yeah, knows yeah. knows what the people want now. <laughs> mm-hmm. The people's champion, of course. Yeah. Rock? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to see Dr. Satan in any type of wrestling uh, arena. Or played by Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I approve. A shadowy figure fastened the hood down and replaced the canvas glided toward the door. Over the penetrating roar of the busy shop outside sounded a faint laugh (laughs) with an icy, blood-chilling sound twice repeated. (laughs) (laughs) Just imagine they're working on it. He's going out the back in like plain view. (laughs) (laughs) The fuck was that? (laughs) Must have been nothing. (laughs) Remember when we made that joke, Kayla made that joke last episode about, um, uh, freaking um, oh, what's his name? Oh, uh, Dan Backslide. You know, I'll steal it. No one will ever know. <laughs> this is actually <laughs> happening now. <laughs> Doctor Satan's just fucking stealing cars. Another bomb planted. <laughs> I've installed another flux capacitor as well as the means to generate one point twenty one gigawatts. <laughs> Great, Scott! And the door opened as if it had never been locked, closed again. This time on a room containing no human thing, in which was a roadster that was far indeed from being the same mechanism as that which had been hand-built in the shop. It was hardly fifteen minutes later when the door was opened once more and the light switched on. The chief engineer and another man were in the doorway. The other man was young, barely twenty-four. He was blonde, dressed in a tuxedo with no hat on. (laughs) 
with his hair rumpled a little. Mm-hmm. His blue eyes were too bright, and he swayed a bit on his feet. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take her out, I tell you. That bitch ain't going to see next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, my car, right? (laughs) He was insisting to the engineer, it's my car, isn't it? Why should I wait till tomorrow? Your father will be very disappointed if you don't wait till tomorrow and use it then on your birthday for the first time, urged urged the engineer. But the man, young Tom Dreyer, only shrugged. I want it tonight. And what I say goes around here. Wheel it out. But wheel it out, I tell you. (laughs) <laughs> the engineer shrugged. He got into the roadster t- after taking off the shrouding canvas. A side door of the laboratory opened. He drove the roadster out and onto the cinder driveway, leading from the fence factory grounds. Boy, that's a job. Okay, <laughs> said Tom Trier, his two bright eyes taking in the lines and power of the machine. Good fucking fetishists. He got in behind the wheel. The motor boomed. So long. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Gay Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Now he's got to throw him into the bombs three times, though. This is the final fight. Like, okay. Again, like, if fucking cards is your fetish, you do you. But <laughs> I just love, I love you, Paul Ernst. <laughs> oh, this is so good. <laughs> I bet he gets in. He's like, why does the door handle all sticky, though? Hmm. It smells strangely familiar in here. <laughs> Uh, the young man waved his hand to the engineer and drove off the watchman at the yard gate barely had time to open the portals for the flying thing then young dryer was out was out and off see you dickhead (laughs) (laughs) the engineer shook his head his face was pale so long the boy had said and it seemed to be to the older man that the words and the parting wave of the hand were prophetic the farewell given for a long trip a long long one perhaps uh, drunk and at the wheel of a thing that would go nearly 150 miles an hour, the engineer whispered to himself. I certainly hope. And then it exploded. <laughs> I, he turned back to the experimental laboratory without finishing the sentence. I'm just a <laughs> he's drive He's driving it off before we were ready. We didn't have time to clean up. We fucking glazed that thing like a Krispy Kreme <laughs> donut, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he's drunk. He won't notice. <laughs> His um, ankles got to. His ankles have got to <laughs> swimming in chowder, sir. <laughs> Here, give me a sec. Uh, the dog is being horrible and pawing. Sure, sure. Door. I got to deal with her. I'll be right back. <laughs> Let's talk about cum some more. <laughs> got a crusty gear shaft, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, this, I, this I, I thing's just... been this thing's been iced like a to- to- toaster strudel, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I can't we wait. Came, we came all over it, is what I'm saying. I can't wait for Doctor Satan to explain why he's killing rich roadsters. Like, yeah. I can't wait for the explanation because <laughs> it's nowhere near as funny as what we're probably going to come up with. I've murdered the weird car fuckers. <laughs> Not in my town. <laughs> so you hate rich people and cars? Well. I mean, kind of, yes, but they're just weird. That is weird. You see what they were doing to that car? I did. I was hiding in the corner. It's gross. Gross. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they speed, they hit little kids, they keep everyone up late at night, they fuck their cars. Like, no one wants these people. Have you read The Great Gatsby? Because <laughs> <laughs> this was worse. Imagine that, but with more car fucking. Did I mention these people fuck their cars? Gag me with, gag me with a spoon. <laughs> all right, I am ready to resume. All right, but I hope all of that went in. Yeah, we are. Okay. <laughs> put some put some fancy music under the uh, uh, Bisme and Alan talking about come comedy hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see how future Maureen feels about that. <laughs> <laughs> an hour later at a li- and an hour later at a little after midnight go just said a little after midnight the great new roadster fled like a silent tremendous night bird over the open highway swaying a little behind the wheel was young dryer beside him sat a girl with unnatural looking red hair 
Okay. And predatory gray eyes set in a face. Is this a fucking werewolf? Oh, God. <laughs> or some type a of real doll? Encrypted. <laughs> 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 When I'm done fucking you, I'm going to fuck this car. <laughs> You're just the warm-up. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> <laughs> or even worse, or even worse, when I'm done, you get the sloppy seconds. You get to fuck the car. I'm going to get... <laughs> Buddy, they won't even let me fuck the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get this thing up to 100 miles an hour, and then I'm going to fuck this real doll at the same time. <laughs> You see, these people have to go. Dr. Satan's just like, wow, I didn't even have to do anything. (laughs) That that, that guy just straight up drove off of a bridge. (laughs) (laughs) Balls deep deep in a rubber doll. (laughs) Oh, I love this story so much. That's so good. <laughs> and predatory gray eyes set in a face as flawlessly regular, flawlessly regular as an uninspiring. At, at, okay, starting over. <sighs> Beside him sat a girl with unnatural looking red hair, predatory gray eyes set in a face as flawlessly regular and as uninspiring looking as a beauty on a magazine cover. Wow, Make up be... your mind about if she's attractive or not. Yeah, way to be kind of condescending there, what Paul. What the fuck? 70, <laughs> said Tom Dreyer, and you don't feel it any more than if you were going 20. Wait till we hit an open stretch. I'll show you, Speed Baby, that he totally has a real doll next to him. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's be satisfied with 70, urged the girl in his head. She was a little pale under her rouge as she glanced from the speedometer to his face. <clears throat> Is that me again? Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Don't be like that. Laugh the boy. That's an old maid speed. I want to show you what this buggy can do. The girl was silent for a moment. She moved restlessly in her seat. Say, she exclaimed finally, do you feel funny? How do you mean? Said Dreyer. Kind of itchy and nervous, said the girl. Nope. <laughs> Probably just feeling womanly things. <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> fuck you know women's periods sending electricity up their spine (laughs) well I do and my hair feels like like it was being pulled by someone I don't like it I don't like going so fast on a road where you're apt to go ground a corner and meet a car piling toward you. How many like, times do I have to tell you I don't like it when you pull my hair? Uh, <laughs> like this? Last dryer. Take <laughs> <laughs> your hand full of her hair. <laughs> oh, God. Half dryer sitting around a curve on the wrong side of the road with screaming tires. Hang on, kid. This is a st- straight stretch 10 miles long. Bet we can make it in five minutes. Kid. Child. Um, <laughs> baby doll. Baby real doll. Needle, <laughs> needle, went to eight, needle went to 85. Tommy shrilled the girl. Don't, please. I I feel... Like a on, woman. Dryer da, 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 da. Hang on. Dryer repeated, shouting over the rush of wind. You'll never have another ride like this. I drive like an asshole. <laughs> Not like the disappointing sex from earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, shrieked the girl. I, oh God. The night was split by a violet flare that could be seen for miles. Like concentrated lightning, it burst forth, shattering the darkness along the road. It blazed into being with no warning. Persisted for about a half a second and died as suddenly. And on the road where the great roadster had been with a man and girl in it was nothing. A charred black streak showed. That was all. Fuck. Well, everybody's traveling through time these days. Hmm. So we got... Okay. Hold on, so hey, it looks like three out. chapters. Yeah. Right before it happened, he hit 85 miles an hour. Uh-huh. So we could 
he could make the leap then that he disappeared when he got to 88. <laughs> could. Well, the needle did go to 100. Uh, oh, yeah. Damn. Damn it. Sorry. Damn. I'm not trying to burst anyone's bubble. I just read ahead. I'm like, oh, no, no. It's, it's yeah, it's that. Um. So we have six chapters again. We want to do three and then next time do the other three. Yeah, that sounds like the way to do it. I think okay. it's, that's, it's a good way to handle these because these are, these are pretty. They're chunky. They are. And we barely saw any of Satan in this one, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Our man Satan. But it looks like the next chapter is giving us something more promising. This is chapter three, Satan's schemes. Isn't that just what he does anyway, though? Like, yeah. yeah. Water is wet. The dryer is dry. Satan schemes. <laughs> 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 in a tower suite of the book hotel next no uh, wait what okay sorry in a tower suite of the book hotel next noon two men sat talking one thin of average height with thin gray hair and eyes lidded by colorless flaps and looked like the membranes veiling the eye of a bird of prey was president of the universal motors corporation detroit's biggest automobiles comp- combine the other was Ascot Keen, criminologist. Boo. Yeah, boo. There he is. Our long boy returns. <laughs> Our long, thin man. <laughs> the logical the long foot, boy. A 25 foot tall Ascot Keen. <laughs> <laughs> He's been working out since the last time we saw him. <laughs> Keen got up from his chair and paced slowly back and forth across the room, his wide-shouldered athletic body moving with the perfect muscular co- coordination. Hmm. There's a line between co and ordination of a trained athlete. His gray eyes were like chips of ice in his lean face. His black brows were drawn low. There is only his girthy, one per- his girthy penis resting half erect <laughs> in his shorts. We get it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> There is only one person on earth who could possibly be responsible for this, he said. Corey, president of the uni- of Universal. <laughs> Corey. <laughs> no we need to again. <laughs> Corey. <laughs> uh, Universal Studios. <laughs> uh, stared up at him. His veiled eyes looked more light than ever, like the eyes of a bird of pr- We know. Good God. But of a very frightened bird now. But even in his fright, he preserved his business caution. Hey, so many- D, you look like a bird. <laughs> I'm like a bird. I only fly away. So many men these days claim knowledge of which they had no right and try to extort money from you on the and try to extort money from you on the cl- that claim. Who is that? He asked warily. Dr. Satan, said Keen. Corey sighed and leaned back in his chair. Oh, here we go. Yes, your weird gay lover. (laughs) Your backdoor lover. (laughs) Ascot Keen is just crazy and has imagined Dr. (laughs) Satan. (laughs) What if Ascot Keen and Dr. Satan... You don't understand. We both charged our chi energy and had an epic duel. Uh Uh-huh, cool. He put a weird (laughs) hypnosis device in a trash can. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. He does ancient Egyptian magic. (laughs) Sure. Sure, he did ask God. Sure, uh, he did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then, okay. and then, and then he put instead of giving me the death rub, he he put me he put me in a box, and he, <laughs> and he used his ancient Egyptian know, fire honey, magic to me the ash. But I I was prepared. I put the magic paste on my head and my palms. I know, and honey. My yes. yes. He lit my favorite chair on fire, but not my favorite desk. But that was really my favorite <laughs> chair. <laughs> And then, and then he killed my best friend. Ask God. I mean, he killed my best friend Wallstead. <laughs> I shouldn't even like Wallstead that much. <laughs> Gotta give you something to help you sleep, hon. <laughs> <laughs> this is morphine. <laughs> and then he's as he's getting as he's getting his foot down. He just yells, "Defeat! Defeat!" <laughs> oh. oh. Uh. You were right. I guess you know the answer behind the the disappearances, as you claim to do. The voice that spoke to me ended by insisting that its owner was somebody with the bizarre name, Dr. Satan. I didn't believe that because that's batshit crazy. <laughs> kind of like you, Keen. <laughs> Keen stared as a man. On I, swear face, God, I swear to God, if we get the Tyler Durden reveal that Ascot, Keen, and Dr. Satan are the same person. <laughs> I was, yeah. It's. <laughs> I'm a weird bird person. Now I'm Dr. Satan. 
Kane stared at the man. On Kane's face was a trace of impatience. She had read the man's thoughts and didn't like them. <laughs> he thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> but he doesn't know that I can read minds. <laughs> but Corey, wealthy and powerful as he was, was only a pawn in this game. And one doesn't become annoyed with pawns. Damn. Okay. Ooh. That, that's pretty hard. Damn. Keen. Keen really is the worst of us. Mm. Yeah. Tell me about the voice, he said. Corey swallowed with difficulty. His face went greenish. It's my favorite <laughs> reality show. <laughs> I was in my office. The office is soundproof so that no voice could have come from outside. I was alone. Even my secretary had been sent out, and the door was locked. I had a really expensive out. car in front of me. Why does he have a soundproofed <laughs> office? What is he doing in there? I sit alone like that often when I want to think out a problem. While I was sitting there, a voice came to my ears. You have heard the news, the voice said. You have heard how Charles Besson and Thomas Dreyer, son of Dreyer the motor magnate, were consumed in a mysterious violet flame. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, just the pretty rat rub again. Are you are you impressed? <laughs> you I've it's... gone from I've gone from deadly botany to grand theft auto. <laughs> Corey looked at Keen like a terrified child. It was almost like the voice of a second self speaking. It came so unobtrusively and, and naturally that for a minute I wasn't startled at all. But then I was <laughs> 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 I realized that there wasn't a soul but myself in that locked soundproof room. A voice, save mine, couldn't sound in there. But this one did. It was a soundproof room, so there couldn't be sound, but there was sound. There was sound in the soundproof room. I could hear it, but how could I hear it? Because there was no. You shouldn't be able to hear sound in the room. Why is there was the sound strange? coming from? <laughs> <laughs> the sound the from the world. Where you shouldn't be able to hear sound. Where is the sound from? Ask God. It was madness, Keen. <laughs> the sound. The sound, Keen. <laughs> the and then his head exploded. <laughs> Scanner style. <laughs> yeah, exactly what I was thinking. A rasping, arrogant, metallic kind of voice. No, it went no. on. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Harsh. I don't know about metallic. Well, maybe if it's sounding in your head. Yeah, it sounded like Skeletor. It is pretty. It is pretty much straight up Skeletor. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Whatever's next. All right. Is it me now? Yeah. All right. You are thinking of that news now. You are planning how best to take advantage in a business way, a fat <laughs> fuck business way, business. of the fact that Besson had died <laughs> suddenly and that Dryer is stunned and helpless from the blow of his son's death. That. That was true, Corey blurted out. <laughs> it was as if someone was reading my mind. Someone was, Keen murmured. Go on. It was me. Also, it was me. Because you're a fat fuck businessman. <laughs> We're in the middle of a depression, you I'm, asshole. Fuck you. I just can't. I'm stuck on the phrase, take advantage in a business way. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing that sounds, personal. It's business. That sounds raunchy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she. Oh, is it me? Yeah, not too. All right. Well, I was thinking about the business advantages that might accrue to Universal by the tragedies. Any man would, Corey Shivered. Any man with low moral fiber, maybe. The voice said, You have more important things to think about. One is your own life. Another is how you can arrange your financial affairs so that you can take $10 million in cash from your fortune. But that is the price of your life. $10 million. You will deliver it to my servant within the next few days, or you will die as Besson and Dreyer did. I swear that, and Dr. Satan has never broken a vow. Or a bone, actually. That's the funny part, you know. <laughs> never have I ever broken a bone. You could think about other things, but what you should really be thinking about is giving me ten million dollars. Do it now. <laughs> Sleep. I swear, uh, to God, I swear to God, you car fucker, I will send you into the velvet fire dimension. Uh, I, is that velvet? <laughs> 
I like that. That's good. The velvet, the velvet fire. I used to play Bad Space for Velvet Fire Dimension. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Corey nod at the back of his bony prehensile hand. What? <laughs> Corey has a prehensile hand. <laughs> He is a bird, I guess. He's like a weird bird person with a prehensile. Corey stood <laughs> up, tending to his feathers, and said, <laughs> <laughs> Corey had to go back to the nest soon. Paul Make sure Ernst, his children. Up. Do you wake up Someone. and just imagine that presidents of companies are bird people? <laughs> Someone, Someone looking in through an observation window at Ascot Keen, just like, uh, he's talking to a bird again. <laughs> <laughs> Keen squawked, Corey. You need to help me. This guy's a real pain in the cloaca. This bird is the president of Universal Motors. Uh Uh-huh. Sure he is, Keen. Of course he is, Ascot. Of course he is. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh, my God. Okay. Um... Someone else, please take this, please. Oh my God, please. Those, those aren't please. the exact words, but that's the message given by the voice, and that was the name, Doctor Santa. <laughs> hey, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we want to wake up to a big surprise. I'd have said the whole thing was some clever trick played by a master at hypnotism or ventriloquism to cheat me out of my money. I'd have defied the orders of the voice, of course. If it hadn't been for the awful way in which Besson and Dreyer's son died. My god. Can people really do that? Consume people in violent violet flame at will? I don't know. I mean, do people regularly use ancient Egyptian fire magic? Like, you know, me and me and Satan do? I mean, we're on a whole nother level, dude. Yeah, I've seen worse. You should have seen that the death my... drops from the last episode. <laughs> that is the funniest two word sentence I've ever read in my life. <laughs> <laughs> only in only in context though. Keen shrugged and Jesus wept. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I wasn't even listening to you. Huh, what? <laughs> Mm, uh, who let this bird in here? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this bird squawking at me? This is the second time he's like, I, this the first time was with Wallstead, where like Wallstead's like, you got to help me, huh? What? Yeah, no, just leave, whatever. This is like he like, just kind of like loses concentration and starts staring at the wall. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, Violet Flame, sure. According to the newspapers and many witnesses, someone can. What do you intend to do? I don't know. I read it in the papers, so I guess it must be true. (laughs) I don't know. That's what I came here to ask. I'm asking you to help me, for God's sake. I had about decided to pay when you phoned. How did you happen to get in touch with me anyway at such a crucial moment? A bit of the old wariness and businesses... (laughs) (laughs) Business suspicion. <laughs> oh, I'll say it again. I love how business is this eldritch entity. <laughs> Business suspicion came back to Corey's face. Keen smiled. The moment I read in New York of the inexplicable tragedies that I that had happened here, I flew to Detroit. Both victims had been prominent in motor manufacturing fuck circles, so I looked for the next one. <laughs> Your name is first on the list of prominence here. You, you know, you may want to get some better PR. So I began with you, intending to run down the list of executives till I found one who had been threatened. I knew who was behind the crimes, and I knew something of how he works. So my course of action was outlined for me. You told me you had been threatened. I asked you to see me, and there's the end. And that's the answer. Corey sighed. Shall I pay this Dr. Satan? Ten million dollars. It's colossal. But life is more important than money. Oh my god. He actually can be helped. Well, there you go. Even if the price asked was only ten cents, snapped Keen, you shouldn't pay it. But Keen can't what, what, be helped. Keen is... Remember, our, our so, hero... So I will kill you if you don't give me ten cents. I would give them ten cents. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna disagree with you there keen yeah i have a real problem with uh with a capitalist villain i ascot keen right now 
Fuck, can you break it? Can you break a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You can just take Ascot a dollar. Keen, <laughs> Ascot, Keen is the, Ascot Keen is the kind of person who believes that we should still be able to legally break coins into smaller denominations, like physically. Like, here, <laughs> I'm going to pay you a third of a cent. <laughs> um, but he'll kill me. The flame. Keen's long jaw squared. His firm mouth became firmer, grimmer, preparing for a smooch. <laughs> he turned into stone. <laughs> I fought this man more than once, he said. I've beaten him before. I'll do it again. Wait, what? Has uh, he? Wait, no. Exaggerating. Uh, if it, it was, was really more than of... once, we didn't see that, and it was more of a draw. You sure this is the second story? Um, I hope so. I'm a little worried now. Hang on a second. Uh, hey, Dr. Satan pretty much got away with the money, and a bunch of people died, so... <laughs> yeah. Keen, you're <laughs> 0 for 1. <laughs> you wanna call that a shut- I'm going to call that a shutout victory for Dr. Satan. <laughs> Oh my god! You Sorry, think I'm you won because at... you think he, you won because he failed to kill you? Yeah, the first <laughs> one I linked that was number three. Oh, is this number five? This is number. F- oh no! Mother this is number fucker. four. Is it number four? No, it says one, number Dr. five Satan, on the, the link. The man who chained the lightning. Hollywood horror. The consuming flame. Uh, well, uh, okay. It doesn't look like it really matters. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, that's true. You know what? When you'd watch like uh Batman the animated series, you didn't always yeah. watch them in order anyway. So you know what? That's fine. We'll come back to that. I mean it ugh. we'll come back. Let's keep going. Let's keep yeah, going. Whatever, Let's just keep whatever. going. We'll find two. Yeah, I was looking for two. Two was hard to find. If anyone well, listening I, I, is actually upset about this, touch grass. Yeah. <laughs> You, okay, you try to hunt down that. fucking ancient ass public domain goddamn serial pulp issues. Yeah. Um, if it helps, I uh, just for the we'll I will try to get I kind of get back on the order of things. But uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm enjoying yeah. this still. Yeah, uh, I but I'm going to for our our purposes, I'm going to po- paste uh, this into the chat because this is has a list of the order of the uh, the stories. OK, cool. Yeah. So we'll anyway, welcome to uh part four part two of part four of two. Um sorry, where were we? Oh yeah. Um yeah. Okay, I've beaten him before. I'll do it again. Don't pay. Your life will be saved. And you take one preca- if you take one precaution. And that, said Corey eagerly, don't ride in a car. In fact, don't ride in anything capable of high speed. Bus, train, anything. He glanced toward the door, indicating that the interview was over. If you refrain from that, you'll be all right. Stay in your soundproofed a, room. Unless he plants a death shrub in your head. Yeah. Yeah. Corey went out and immediately got into a car. <laughs> <laughs> Corey went out and started digging worms out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> The door opened after his exit, and Keen's secretary came into the room. Tall, lithe, beautiful, with dark blue eyes and hair more red than brown. She stared at her employer with a look in her eyes that would have would have revealed much to him had he been gazing. Oh, pardon me. It's all right. Had he been gazing at, at her at the moment instead of looking unseemingly, looking unseeingly out the window at the rooftops of the automobile city. Beatrice Dale's feelings for Ascot Keen were apparent to everyone, save Ascot Keen. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> He's clueless. I love it. Marvelously astute in all other matters, in this one, he remains singularly obtuse and gay as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but I only have eyes for Satan. <laughs> and it appeared that he always would. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Beatrice sighed and came up to him. You have found out how the deaths were caused? She asked professionally, with the glow hidden in her eyes. Keen nodded absently. I have found out several things. Not exactly in detail, but closely enough to map out my plans. Dr. Satan is up to his old methods of harnessing the forces of nature to do crimes for him, you know, as one does. It was nature that killed Besson and Dreyer's son. Static electricity. Both Besson and... Nope. Hey, sorry. Nope. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. Nope. No. Nope. Sorry. Sorry. No. Sorry. Sorry. No. Static electricity. I. I. No. <laughs> it don't do that. We are. We are coming right off of magic Egypt fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows what happened between now and then? But sure, for us, we're coming off of magic Egypt fire now. True. 
And I remember well, when I was when I was a kid, and they brought out that like when I, when we went to the science museum when oh, I was yeah. little, and they brought out that they brought out that electric ball that you put your hand on and it made your hair rise up. And yeah, then yeah. the guy at the front said, "This is static electricity, and also it can vaporize a car in purple fire." <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you're going to take one of these home with you, don't go above 85 miles per hour. <laughs> Both Besson and Young Dryer were notoriously fast driver car fuckers. Very well, Dr. Satan contrived. Very well. Very well. Okay. Very well. Dr. Satan contrived a method of generating and storing static electricity in enormous amounts. Probably the generating was done by the wheels themselves turning at fast speeds. The electricity was stored in some small device that wouldn't be noticed if examination was made of the car before it was taken out. When a voltage was built up, that would be far beyond any amount that could be registered on any recording instruments yet devised. It exploded the storage device and utterly consumed car, and utterly consumed car and occupants and everything else. That is the only thing that would explain the violet light told of by the witnesses. Not magic, which exists in this world, but okay. <laughs> in a way, a natural death, but a gruesome, fearful, spectacular death, which would be which would so horrify and cow other motor manufacturers that they would give Dr. Satan anything he asked rather than risk the fate, same fate themselves, or just make cars that can't go fast. I need to know... <clears throat> I know it's because it's Dr. Satan and he does wacky things. <laughs> I want him to sit down and explain to me what the advantages are of not just blowing up the car. <laughs> he could just make a bomb. That's too basic. <laughs> I want them to explode in violet flame. It's not weird Ooh. enough. I am the world's weirdest criminal, you asshole <laughs> do not question me again or i will stick your head in a piranha pool and the piranhas are made of copper <laughs> why because it's weird <laughs> and also the pool is not held in anything except a magic force field <laughs> i've put my penis into a beehive ask <laughs> <I've seen. laughs> What are you going to do now? <laughs> stumped yet? <laughs> Has my massive intellect stumped you? Uh, <laughs> rest assured that doing this is somehow going to make a rich person explode <laughs> into some other color of fire. <laughs> when I fuck this beehive, Wall Street will go down in flames. Deuce. Deuce fire. <laughs> oh my god. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Magical Horrifying. Fuse static fire. <laughs> <laughs> Horrifying and fearful enough, breathed Beatrice with a shiver. Ascot, you escape the other death this fiend has invented. Can you escape this? For of course he'll turn the new weapon on, on you too. More than anything else on Earth, he wants to get rid of you. He'll try to kill you as soon as he learns you are here. Keen laughed a little, without humor. As soon as he knows I'm here? My dear, you underestimate him. As surely as you li we live and breathe, he knows that now. Dun, Dr. Dun, Satan dun. emerged from the corner of the room. <laughs> yes, I've been here the entire time. <laughs> yes, Keen, I knew that you were there where you live. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you live. I'm dating Beatrice, by the way. <laughs> Just to spite you. I she means nothing that to me. <laughs> me? Oh, my yep, God. Yep. <laughs> At 20 minutes past noon, a man in the dungarees of the Union Airlines mechanics turned off a sidewalk into the yard of a factory. It was a small factory, two stories high, less than an eighth of a block square. Its windows were boarded up. The yard was grown with weeds. A man sat in the open doorway of the deserted-looking building. <clears throat> he was an elderly man, poorly dressed. His faded blue eyes stared straight ahead with curious blankness. His face was stubbled with three days' growth of grayish beard. His palms were sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> the man in dungarees came up to the doorway. A small mo Yes! <laughs> yeah! Yes. He's back, a small, baby. A small monkey-like fellow with a mat of hair over his face through which peered small, cruel eyes. 
He hopped as he walked in an oddly animal way. Is anyone in? He asked the watcher. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just talks like a dude. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The watchman's faded blue eyes did not move. They but continued who to look. The watchman. Ooh. Curse and or Bostiff. They continued to look straight ahead as he sat there like a statue. Yes, sir, he said. How many? Asked the man in dungarees. Two, sir. The watchman's lips moved like mechanical things. He looked and acted like something actuated with springs and wires. Oh, they've made a, a mechanical man. Oh. The little man in dungarees shivered a bit. His pale eyes narrowed with an emotion that might have been fear, but wasn't. He walked past the watchman, who did not move a muscle, and into the factory building. It was dark in here, in spite of the noon daylight outside. The reason was that the entire inside of the first floor was draped closely in heavy black fabric, which also stretched from a frame crossing in front of the door, so that the door could be opened. Should be opened. Oopsie, another typo. Could be open innocently, and yet outside eyes could not see in and detect the black drapes. This is another Dr. Satan. When he sets up in a new place, he has to set up the black drapes first. That's like the mm-hmm. first thing. He just gets them all around mm-hmm. his little, his little cubby hole. And then he oh. puts the burning skull in and the table. Like, uh, and, you know, yeah. like Tommy was <laughs> Oh, Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and then he sells stuff with his face on it. Yes. His old brand. Uh, the little man passed under the door drape. He entered the dark interior, which was dimly lit by red electric bulbs. So that it resembled the corner of some weird inferno. <laughs> yep. yep you've seen this before over a bench on which was a glistening small receptacle about a third the size of a cigar box a figure bent which was like something seen in a fanciful illustration of hell a tall gaunt figure draped from head to heels in a red robe with red gloves shielding the hands and a red mask over the face even over the head of the figure red had been draped a skull cap from which protruded two Luciferian horns in imitation of the horns of the devil. Oh boy! Next this, yeah. Next to this eerie figure was the body of a legless man, gigantic torso supported by calloused, powerful hands. Gus said the imperious red-draped figure uh, without turning his head. The little man in dungarees drew a quick breath. The red figure had its back toward him. It could not have heard his soft entrance. Yet, as though it had been facing him, the entity, uh, the ent- entry had been noted. Yes, Dr. Satan, he said. Report, please. Oh, at least he's kind about it. Yeah, I mean, these guys are his, like, best friends, his BFFs, right? I hope so. You I'll two are as weird you. and freaky as me. <laughs> you don't fuck cars, do you? That's, like, my one rule right I now. I will draw the line there. If I find out either of you are into car fucking, it's out on your ass. If you're lucky. They were in swing choir in high school together. (laughs) Swing (laughs) choir. Ah, I'm sorry. The dog is being a. Give me. All right, we're almost done. Crazy. Want to talk about cum some more? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So. uh... (laughs) Over to the abyss me out, abyss me now, and cum comedy hour. Comedy, comedy, comedy. Comedy. Huh. That's good branding right there. Mm. That's uh, <laughs> everything went up in a violet flash of light, except for all the cum. A lot of that was left over. Good lord, so much. It's, there's something terrifying about uh, something that will destroy, disintegrate everything about you, except for it just leaves your cum. <laughs> <laughs> How that. Somehow that's the one thing from your body it leaves. Just whatever cum you had in you. <laughs> I, I can't get over the idea of Thomas Dreyer talking to a real girl doll. <laughs> Driving fast. <laughs> it's just an amazing image. <laughs> like, I want to see this movie so badly. <laughs> It's just a, like everyone in the story we're making out to be absolutely just off the rocker, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You don't have to try super hard, though. Nah. Nah. And a lot of that's definitely how it's written, but oh boy. Where the fuck is number two? Because I looked high and low for that shit. Whatever. Like, yeah. like I said, it doesn't matter. I mean, like I said, go to Amazon. Yeah. Okay, let's try this again. And Matt made so many references to BTAS right, last episode that 
Uh, it's fine that we can read these. We can read these in whatever order. I don't give a shit. They're all going to be the same. There's going to be two rich people in some capacity <laughs> that Dr. Satan fucks over. Ascot Keen finds out about it and he's like, I have to stop this. And then they have a confrontation that involves the theme of the week. And this, in this case, it's static electricity and cars. We could even frame it like we're finding them out of order, you know, as if we were trying to buy them, you know? Like, I mean, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. yeah who cares? I yeah. find number two cool. If not, fucking whatever. Well, we, uh, we know the next we know the next one that we need to find is the man who chained the lightning. And it's in the September 1935 <laughs> issue of uh, Weird that, Tales. I have a brief aside to read a review from Amazon.com of the Dr. <laughs> Satan collection. Sure. Yes. Three out of five stars. Mm. Hope villain kills people. Cool. This is all the Dr. Satan stories. They are fun, <laughs> but repetitive as hell. <laughs> <laughs> the way he... The way he kills the rich men of the city is pretty cool, but the means he is thwarted are weak, still fun. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the whole review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured that's how it's going to go. He's nothing if not um, a, a man of uh, a, a man of very specific means. Dr. Satan says, as you know, I am a man of special needs. You will now <laughs> receive the fist of fury. Bring to me the long rubber glove. Any, mini, mighty mo. <laughs> I wonder where my glove will go. <laughs> Thank you. Where, where, where the fuck were we? I'm sorry. Or at report, please. Report. Oh, yeah, that was me. It was me. Yes. Curse hopped closer in his monkey-like fashion <laughs> and stood next to Bostiff, the legless giant. My favorite children's story. <laughs> <laughs> ho ho ho. Ostiff the Legless Giant. I rolled doll. Um, <laughs> from under the BLG? The, voluminous... the BLG. <laughs> the Legless Giant. The, the Legless Giant. I don't like the big Legless Giant. <laughs> Miller, the truck manufacturer, did as you ordered. He said docilely to Dr. Satan. Here are 30 checks of $100,000 apiece. Dr. Satan's coal black eyes glowed from the eye holes of the red mask. In them was a glacial triumph. It is well. You got into the Union Airlines hangar? <laughs> Did you fuck up a bunch of Boeings? Topical? <laughs> <laughs> Move a couple panels. <laughs> <coughs> I did, said Gers, his pale eyes glinting. <laughs> 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 Because it stores electricity, but still. Oh my you god. Attach, you attached the storage cube? <laughs> <laughs> it's called a box, Dr. Satan, but yes, it did do that. <laughs> oh. from, a- from Aperture Science? <laughs> storage cube. Oh, shit. Uh, oh. I want to see. I want to see Doctor Satan try to kill Cave Johnson now. <laughs> I did with the wire leading to the propeller and with fins attached to the propeller blades. Unholy satisfaction glittered in the coal black eyes. Then it was dimmed, and the light of rage glowed there. It will be as with. It will be as we wish it, unless Keen discovers it in time. Keen is here. Quavered Gurse. Bostiff spat out an oath, his dull eyes red with fury. He is here. Oh, wait, sorry. Never mind. I spat out an oath that we didn't hear. Okay. Oh. He is here, grated Dr. Satan. Thank you. Yes, that is what he did. <laughs> I gleaned that from the mind of Corey. He is here in Detroit. Gross. And Corey has seen him and was advised not to meet my demands. That was foreseen, which is why you attached the storage cube to the propeller. <laughs> he is in a tower suite at the Book Hotel with his secretary, Beatrice Dale, and he is daring to match his wits against mine once more. I see murder flared in the coal black eyes. The red gloved hands close slowly, quiveringly, <laughs> turgidly. <laughs> Moist, moist, lovingly, <laughs> sexually, <laughs> sensually. <laughs> this time, erotically. <laughs> this time, Ascot Keen dies, 
This time I will get rid of the one obstacle between me and unlimited power. <laughs> and true, true fear love. over the minds of men. He, tur- he turned back to the bench with his red glove fingers, delicately adjusting tiny fine plates on some substance like mica, which packed the interior of the small metal container of which he was working. A container like that, which had been attached to the sedan of Besson and the roadster of young Tom Dreyer. With Keen out of the way, he grated, I could be supreme on Earth, and I will be. So fuck you. <laughs> and uh, my dick, I am Dr. Satan. <laughs> Fear me and my... St- okay, it's called the death machine, but it's... <laughs> he hasn't even called it that. It's just storage cubes. Yes, it's just storage cubes right now. Stop. I'm 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 walking down to fucking the post office and I'm asking for a storage cube. I want to see what people do. Oh, Yo, I'm my doing gosh, it. yes. <laughs> boss just speaks up like, boss, you're like you're like branding is like the one thing you're good at, and I don't <laughs> see how like the one thing you didn't give a cool name. <laughs> storage cube? Really? The, the, the storage cube is what you've named. The thing that makes vehicles disappear in, in purple fire. <laughs> now, now, Bostiff, I was once trapped in a storage unit for 15 minutes as a child. It scarred me irreparably. That is true fear. True fear! He starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wait for my dad to come and get me. <laughs> And I said, Daddy Satan, what took you so long? Pa- Papa Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, well, thank you everyone for joining us. We will uh, pick up with the next one as soon as we can. Part two of part four. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that'll be what we probably hit up next because I'd like to hit these, you know, make sure we get through one complete story. But yeah, um, this is, you know what? It just goes to show that it doesn't matter what order we read these in, except maybe not the penultimate and ultimate stories, but we'll we'll yeah. keep it relatively on track as much as we can. Um, not that it again, not that it matters. They're all going to be, as the Amazon reviews so succinctly put it, they're all going to be kind of like the same fucking thing. That's yeah, fine. pretty pretty repetitive. <laughs> repetitive. <laughs> Repepto bismal. They're repetitively enjoyable, though, as far as mm-hmm. I'm concerned. These are great. Oh yeah. Well, like the format is very like, for lack of a better word, formulaic. But the the content is just so bizarre and entertaining. It's really fucking silly. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and hey, if you like what we do here, I want to take a moment to say we really enjoy seeing the feedback for these. And so, if you can. You know, leave us a comment or a review or a rating or anything like that. Just to show that what we're doing is engaging to you. It always helps lift our spirits over here. I know it's like the basic bitch kind of thing to ask for, but like, honestly, it does help. We're, you know, a relatively small, um, you know, we do, we do it mostly because it's just fun for us to do. But we always enjoy knowing that people are enjoying the, the the stuff we put out there, especially the stuff like this. So, yeah, if you like this, just just let us know. It it it. It's a it's a positive thing. It's a it's a good thing. It's a fine the, fine. In the thing. comments, in the comments, leave us a question for future Patreon uh, segment. Ask Doctor Satan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, that's not a bad idea at all. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to ask Doctor Satan some questions, go ahead and put him there. We'll see how they go. And hey, speaking of Patreon, patreon.com slash creative horrors, where you can go to support all of the podcasts on the Creative Horror Network, both active and inactive. Well, mostly the active ones. The inactive ones, you can still go and listen to. But the active ones, like uh, the Jameson Tapes, this show, uh, Darkly Lit, and uh, pauses for effect as brain calculates. Is it really those three? Yeah, right now. Right now. There will, I mean, we, we have ideas for more. We've talked about them. We're all just trying to kind of get a feel, get a vibe. And then we're going to, we're going to move forward with stuff in the future. It's always a little tricky because we're all over the place and our schedules are varied. Even trying to get this set up was a little tricky, but we did it because we love doing this. We love hanging out. We love you all. And if you join us on Patreon, we'll love you even more because we are greedy. No, because we are <laughs> capitalists. No, because we have dregs that we can give you. Don't you like dregs? We'll give you dregs. So I have that. And um, you can also enjoy new patreon additions like some extra jameson tapes content and also alan gets drunk and watches a thing yep 
One coming out soon. Hell yeah. Looking forward to that as well. I may just, and... I may just put, I also may just put my text review of uh, Madam Web up on the Patreon. <laughs> that was really funny. I, I think more people should see that. It was really good. <laughs> But yeah, uh, thank you both for joining me again for this. And uh, yeah, until next time, uh, I guess we better kind of watch our speed. You never know if Dr. Satan has installed a storage cube in our <laughs> cars at this point. But I got to wonder, are they really vaporized or did they did he just send them so far back in time that no one will ever see them again? Like a weeping angel yeah. scenario. Everybody go around and refer to boxes as storage cubes. <laughs> Please do. I it's certainly hope me and my... I certainly hope me and my driving buddy blow up Wanda will be safe. (laughs) (laughs) Good evening, intrepid listeners. This is the Pasta Shade, the host of Midnight Marinera, and this podcast is part of CreativeHorror.com, a network of podcasts and creators working together to build a constructive community of horror fans. For more content like this, visit us at (laughs) CreativeHorror.com. (laughs) 